Some scientists believe America's breadbasket could soon be empty, and they're warning a relentless drought is harming the nation's wheat crops. Scorching temperatures, dry soil, and low water resources have put wheat production in Kansas and other Midwestern states at risk. Researchers say the problem is severe, and they're turning to more unorthodox crops to fill the gap. Let's bring in Jenny Morber. She's a science journalist who reports on climate resiliency and food. Jenny, so what's the scientific evidence that climate change is reducing the re nutritional value of foods? Yeah, so there's a lot of studies. There's many, many studies that show that climate change is affecting both the caloric value of foods and the nutritional value. So that nutritional type, amount, and quality of our food. Uh, research studies show that um, our foods are decreasing in protein, in iron, and, and in zinc and B vitamins. So there's a large body of research showing that this is happening and it's happening more and more as climate change worsens. So let's take that a step further. What foods are most affected? Uh, some that are uh, being affected right now are just our staple crops. Corn is a big one, wheat, uh, barley, um, and there's other crops that we know and love that um, will be affected and are being affected too. There's uh, chocolate, coffee, cherries, maple syrup, wine grapes, uh, those wonderful foods that we all love um, are and will continue to be affected. Now, are these uh, food products that are especially sensitive to, let's say, rain and sunlight and heat? Yes, yeah, yeah. So some of them are very um, drought intolerant. Um, some, like coffee, have developed various uh, diseases and they're being attacked by something called coffee rust. Um, maple syrup, maple trees don't do well if it, uh, you know, it doesn't get cold enough. And cherries also require some cool temperatures. Um, uh, corn um, and wheat require a lot of water, so the water is an issue. Um, and it just, our crops have specific needs and those uh, environment, as the environment changes, uh, some right. of them uh, just can't just can't make up for it. All right, thanks for explaining that. So, how are scientists mm -hmm. trying to problem solve this? Right. Well, there's several different ways. One is through genetic engineering, um, trying to help enable the crops that we know and love be able to withstand these differences in climate. Um, you know, drought, floods, things like that. But another um, way to do this, another alternative, is to look at the crops that are naturally just kind of resilient. So some of these are like millet. Millet is a crop that can take really high temperatures. Um, mm. Sea beans is one that uh, most people probably aren't eating right now, but you can actually use salt water um, instead of, instead of- uh, No kidding. Regular <laughs> water, yeah. Pretty yeah. surprising. They taste amazing. They taste like salty <laughs> cucumbers. Um, another thing is sea vegetables like kelp. You know, you don't need, you don't need any land to grow kelp. You can grow that in the water and it's incredibly uh, nutritionally dense. So how are scientists striking this balance between, um, you know, the foods that are good for us and then these genetically modified or genetically adapted foods? Right. Well, it just depends on the different, um, the different answers, different ways you want to go. So, of course, there's always going to be foods that we want. So the foods that we know and love, uh, we don't want to see those go away. So we're trying, the scientists are trying to find ways to genetically engineer, you know, drought tolerance ability to um, live with less water, to, to, you know, just be more resilient to pests and things like that. But um, they're also trying to grow crops in areas where they might be more suited for the environment. Um, crops that, you know, need more water, maybe we can grow them in a place that, mm -hmm. that has more water. And then like these other um, more resilient crops trying to help people get more used to eating them. Jenny Morber, thank you for your research and your analysis. Thank you so much. It was so good to be here. Of course.